第三十二对演讲的题目是 Number Four， 计时开始。Taiwan, which is famous for its food and culture, has a lot to offer. If I were asked to design a three-day Taiwan Day activity, I will plan to showcase a series of Taiwanese characteristics, including foods, geographical features, and the religious practice. Taiwan is much influenced by many different cultures, and therefore. Foreigners can easily find flavors they are familiar with in Taiwanese restaurants. For example, the American style, the Japanese style, the Thai style, and even the Italian style. Vis visitors must go to night markets also, since they are full of Taiwanese tasty local snacks. And also, they. It is the best place for foreigners to understand the Taiwanese eating habits. In addition to the Taiwanese local snacks, visitors can also dine at Michelin-starred restaurants. For example, Ding Tai Fung's dumpling. If you want something more Western, you can go to the Andre Zhang's Raw for the best Western food. During the three-day activity, I will also prepare some tasty local snacks. For foreigners to enjoy, and would you please? Thank you, Kevin. On the second day, I will show people from different countries many geographical features in Taiwan. With the convenient public transportation, people can experience various views from mountain to sea in a relatively short time. People can visit Kunxin National Park to enjoy cabra ribs. Go to Yangmingshan National Park for volcanic terrains and hot springs. Go to Taichung National Park to get close to natural ecology. Go to Alishan Recreation Forest Area to appreciate the beautiful landscapes, and see the gorgeous Interaco National Park. During the three-day activity, I will display the photos of beautiful scenes in Taiwan, and play two movies. Beyond Beauty, Taiwan Front Above, and Formosa 3D. On the third day, religious festival will be introduced, and there are many historical and cultural stories behind them. Carrie, please. Thank you, Anne. For example, massive Mazu pilgrimage during March around the island features Taiwan's goddess Mazu. People pray to Mazu for protection and safety while fishing in the sea. This tradition demonstrates Taiwan people's goodness and diligence. The another festival is the burning of the king boat. People gather on the beach in Pingtung County in October, seeing a delicate traditional sailing junk burned in flames. The burning of the boat is intended. To send off the Wang Ye to help ward off evil things and disease around Donggang the next three years. The annual Yan Shui Bihai Firework Festival during Lantern Festival will also catch people's eyes because it is exciting and adventurous. Tiana, please. Thank you, Carrie. Best on folklore. After the residents pray to Guan Yu, a god lived in the early China for peace. Millions of fireworks were used to drive away the plague. Even though there is no plague now, people are still dressed in full protection, put up with noise, smoke, and fear, and join the celebration. In June 27th. This event has become one of the Taiwan cultural assets. It is worth seeing. Taiwan, small but full of glamour, is such a good place to visit. After three-day Taiwan Day activity, I believe Taiwan will be brought to the world stage, and people will really enjoy spending their time here.
第三十一对演讲的题目是 Number Two， 计时开始。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you scanned for a Wi-Fi signal when you walked in here today? And why did you do that? Did you upload some pictures to Instagram? Maybe a video to YouTube? Nowadays, our thoughts, ideas, and opinions can be spread across the world in an instant to a very, very extensive audience. We now live in an era of citizen diplomacy, subject to oversight from a population at large. That is made possible by the freedom of the internet and the online digital world, the demands of openness and transparency, in policy development, real-time communication, countering fake news, and alternative facts in the digital world, are all upon diplomacy. Diplomacy, in an age of social media, is beginning to live its protective past to become interactive. Better networked and more people-centered and people-friendly. Now, Bonnie is going to give you some examples of how this is done by a well-known and sometimes controversial person. Now, I know this is probably a rhetorical question, but has anyone heard of the Twitter in chief? Traditionally, diplomacy is defined as. The art and practice of conducting negotiations between nations, in order to implement policies and pursue interests favorable to one's own country, Donald Trump, President of the United States, has provoked many of us to seriously consider redefining our interpretation of art. Now, all opinions of the man aside. His use of social media to tell his side and take on any media organization, politician, celebrity, or whoever gets in his way is unprecedented. His business approach to diplomacy is, in his eyes and words, winning, new trade agreements, good economic numbers and growth, popular support for many of his policies. To say his unique style of using social media is effective would be a huge understatement. Sharon is not going to, to talk about another person whose name has something to do with this competition. So while we are on the topic of presidents, I'd like to talk about another president who uses social media for diplomacy as well, although. In a much more unpretentious way. So, did you get what Bonnie said? Name, competition, English competition. Anybody get it? President Tsai Ing-wen. You know, English Ing-wen. Followers on Facebook: 2.1 million. Twitter: over 290,000. Instagram: 35,000. And 6,300 on YouTube. Just last year, she posted saying that social media was excellent for the new southbound policy, in part by helping tourists choose where to visit by checking out Taiwan on Instagram. She routinely thanks foreign leaders and dignitaries when they speak out for Taiwan. When hosting guests at the presidential office, the events. Are often streamed live across several platforms, and now, more so than ever, she's warning us about something to be on our guard for. Something my friend Grace will hopefully draw your attention to: fake news. As we are seeing more and more across social media, the downside of free speech is that there are those who post and circulate false information, and At times, outright lies. The consequences of fake news range greatly, from resignations or broken hearts to broken homes and suicides. Fortunately, as awareness has grown, so has action to fight it. For now, the best advice is the old adage: Don't believe everything you read, ladies and gentlemen. 
The foundation of diplomacy is that you share common interests and values. We, Taiwanese, have an opportunity to show the world just that. Our coming elections represent the heart of any true democracy. By posting, tweeting, taking video, and live streaming, we have an opportunity to show the world, hey, we take our democracy seriously. Now I wonder, I really wonder just how many retweets, reposts, likes, and shares we, we could, could all get. get. Thank, Thank you. you. The number two. Hello, esteemed judges and fellow delegates, uh, fellow diplomats. Under the development of technology, social media can be spread widely just with a wink of an eye. Social media like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter is an important part to promote our country and bring a new perspective to others. Social media plays an important role in the Arab world in 2011. When the Arab Spring with social media, it is what kept Arab Spring so uprising and organized. And for the foreign affairs, if we use social media to promote our country and to communicate with other countries, social media can be a huge boost when, when to promote our country because our focus object will not only be the other countries' governments, but also the citizens of other countries. They can hear news about Taiwan and have a new perspective. Before I introduce the benefits of the new media, I want to talk to you. What's the difference between the old media and new media? What's old media? Like newspaper and magazine. But what is the problem? Maybe the news in newspapers can only show the things that happen in our countries, but instead of knowing the things around the world. But right now in this century, as the technology advanced, if our citizens turn on the TV or search in the internet, we can know about the latest information all around the world. But not besides, we can see all other countries' policy and know about what the things they're good of and what the things we are uh, need to improve and bring us to more, bring us to having more success way. As an example, I would like to ask how many of you people have been focusing, paying full attention on election recently? These uh, candidates use propaganda, advertisement on social media to promote what they will do and what benefits they will bring after being chosen as mayor. And these candidates have fully shown that how useful these social medias are. As you can see from news, more and more people have been changing their stances after their promote after the advertisements and propagandas. So just like the South Bank policy, if we use these new social media, we can use them as a really good tool and also a weapon and then also an advantage to promote our country to these countries, South Bank countries. The development of new media has effectively been transformed the landscape in terms of how message are exchanged. There are also several advantages. The first is it's up to date. Messages are getting exchanged so quick around the world nowadays. 
with an internet connection and an electronic gadget, you can get updated news from every corner of the world. Second, it is also cost efficient. Without the printing, the like fast amount of newspapers and magazine, like the way, like the old fashioned way, the new media can send the message around the world to get thousands of views just with a single news document posted on website or with a single tweet. And the third, it also has no boundaries. Message can be exchanged through on countries to countries, no matter our location. But I, want, I also want to remind fellow guests how quickly technology advances these days. What's new today may soon be old tomorrow. So I deeply believe that the most important quality we should possess is open-mindedness. We should be adventurous in terms of testing the new technologies and see if reasonable we should employ them to better promote our policies and introduce our countries to the other to the whole world. I believe it can be very helpful to promote Taiwan on a global stage. Thank you for your time. The number five. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Taiwan has been stepping up efforts to build relations with new Southbound policy partner countries these years to lessen the economic opportunities and open up more economic opportunities. In recent years, the Taiwanese government has promoted relations by improving and expanding tourist, STEM, and trade relations. However, there is much more to do to enhance these ties, or bury it, to have long-lasting and reciprocal relations, especially considering our uniqueness and strength. And my partners will explain more about the issue in detail. Thanks, David. First, tourism has always been a strong pillar of the Taiwan economy. By promoting Taiwan's tourism in the new Southbound policy countries, many visitors will be drawn to Taiwan. For example, the Taiwanese government offers visa-free entry program for visitors from the Philippines, Thailand, and Brunei. Visitors from these countries can experience authentic Taiwanese culture and know Taiwan as a friendly and warm-hearted country. To broaden this traveling program, Government can consider visa exemptions for more new Southbound policy countries. The Tourism Bureau can even arrange more travel fairs or encourage travel agencies to participate in international travel exhibition to boost tourist arrivals. As tourists get to know Taiwan through their travels, the mutual links between their home countries and Taiwan can be better fostered with a better understanding of our culture. Thanks, Wendy. Second, Taiwan can provide assistance in launching cooperative projects in specific fields of science technology. For example, our science and technology have been highly praised in many subfields, such as IT service, microchips, flat panels, etc. We can help the new southbound policy countries with our expertise in these areas and supply them with necessary components or equipment. Also, Taiwan has demonstrated its strengths in space technology development at the 6th Bengaluru Space Expo in India with Taiwanese satellites and space components. And many experts expressed an interest in working with Taiwan. By joining new southbound policy countries in bettering their technology, Taiwan can earn trust, respect, and gratitude. This way, our relations with them can be strengthened. Also, we can provide some training with our know-how and established skills, such as our past cooperation in fire service training with the Philippines. Thank you, Paul. 
Lastly, another key goal of the new southbound policy is to enhance economic and trade relations. Taiwan's government should work towards signing the Investment Guarantee Accords with the new southbound policy countries. Recently, Taiwanese firms signed the seven memoranda of understandings with Malaysian firms across various fields, such as food, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, textile, IT service, healthcare, and traffic solutions during the Malaysia-Taiwan Industrial Collaboration Summit. Also, the signing of the bilateral taxation should be a top priority. By laying the foundation for investment and trade, more opportunities are ensured for Taiwanese businesses. In terms of economic growth, Taiwan and the new southbound policy countries can both enjoy investment from each other with the chat pack or partnership based on mutual trust. Thanks, Alyssa. Taiwan has come a long way in terms of relations with new South Bund policy countries. But we have a lot more to do for strengthened, long-lasting, and multifaceted relations. For now, Taiwan and new South Bund policy countries can look forward to continued growth and partnership that will undoubtedly become stronger in the future. Thank you. The number four. Good morning. Our topic is Imagine you're designing a three-day Taiwan Day activity in a foreign country. What would you plan to showcase Taiwan's uniqueness? Taiwan is a fantastic place filled with beautiful cultures, mouth-watering foods, stunning sceneries, and lovely people. It is an island overflowed with a uniqueness that is appealing and fascinating. It would be an excellent opportunity for the world to know about Taiwan's attractiveness, enjoy Taiwan's tastiness, see Taiwan's beautifulness, and get to meet Taiwan's friendliness. If I were to hold an activity in a foreign country for a cultural exchange, a three-day Taiwan Day festival would surely let the people from other countries get to meet and know about Taiwan. Located at the heart of Asia, Taiwan has played an important role in transportation and military position since ancient times. And also, with a variety of different ethnic groups, the island has spread its own fascinating culture and rich history that differ from other places in the world. On the first day of Taiwan Day Festival, we will launch a TED event, focusing on Taiwan's historical richness ethnic pluralism, and cultural connotation that are worth spreading. In addition to the event, we will also set up a fair nearby with stands, introducing different aspects, from historical artifacts that show the evolution of Taiwan's costume, to traditional items of clothing and accessories of various Aboriginal tribes. Both events allow people to experience the sense of Taiwan's multiculturalism. Thanks, Emily. Speaking of Taiwan, the part that we definitely could not miss would be its incredibly delicious local food. The second day of the festival will be a fair of cultural food. During the day, we will introduce Taiwanese goodies, such as agricultural products. And we can also invite different countries to take part in this food fair. With the passage of the Tropic of Cancer, Taiwan has an amazing ecological environment. When the sun sets, the world-known Taiwan night market takes stage. And there we find the most authentic Taiwanese street food. The people in the country can enjoy not only the tempting Taiwanese street food, but also enjoy the atmosphere of Taiwan's local customs. 
being born and raised in Taiwan, we are all deeply enchanted by this beautiful country. Being dubbed Ihar Formosa, or beautiful island by the Portuguese, Taiwan is always known for its breathtaking sceneries. Taiwan's topography is luxurious and complex, with valleys and coastal hills, plants and basins all encompassing on one small island. The magnificent Alpine Valley of Toraco, the clouds and the sunrise of Ali Shan, the majestic and varied scenery of Yushan, and the tropical ocean landscape of Kanjing, the waters and the mountains of Samun Lake. On the last day of the festival, we would display photography and also artwork of these places in Taiwan to let the world take a glimpse of this beautiful island. We would also invite different countries to join this exhibition as a cultural arts exchange, creating a friendly and helpful relationship of artistry. The Taiwan Day Festival will definitely let the world realize our soft powers and bring Taiwan to the world stage. Thank you. Number five, Number five. Number five. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What can we do to enhance relations with New South Wales policy partner countries? In our opinion, we may pave the way as follows. First, we can promote a visa-free policy with countries involved in the New South Wales policy, which is also in accordance with principles of reciprocity. To revitalize the tourism in Taiwan and to encourage people-to-people -people exchange, the government has conducted trial visa-free entry program for nationals from Thailand, Brunei, and the Philippines since 2016. The measure has attracted numerous visitors from Taiwan's New South Wales policy partner countries. Last year, the number of visitors from Thailand and the Philippines reached a new record, which indicates that the visa-free policy is indeed beneficial for the interaction of two sides. According to statistics from the Taiwan's Tourism Bureau, the number of Taiwanese people traveling to New South Wales visa-free policy countries is also increasing. Therefore we may see our visa-free policy as achieving the expected effect. Second, we friendly to foreign workers and new residents in Taiwan. Considering their influence on our lives, we know that there must be some pros and cons, but the annual growth rates of workforce from abroad can be neglected. According to data reported by Workforce Development Agency, Minister of Labor, the numbers of workers from abroad has been growing year by year. It was reported that over 400,000 foreign workers work in Taiwan in 2011, over 500,000 in 2014, over 600,000 in 2016, and 676,000 in 2017. Besides, there are nearly 522 foreign spouses in Taiwan, of which 147,000 are from Southeast Asia. It goes without saying, working or living with Southeast Asian people or even getting married to one of them is an inevitable trend. Besides, there will be over 10% of the real populations belonging to the new residents of spring in the next 10 to 20 years. Perhaps this new residents of spring will run for elected representative in the near future. The ethnic structure of Taiwan is changing. But apparently, most of the new resident socioeconomic status is relatively underprivileged compared with the native people of Taiwan. Many social welfare problems still need solving. There are more and more problems resulting from the rising number of the foreign workers happening, such as the poor payment and human rights. These problems have impaired our performance on the international stage. Lack of empathy toward them Taiwanese usually don't care what they need, even looking down upon them. All men are created equal regardless of their race, age, and gender. 
Our government should take action to improve their human rights and working environment. Taiwanese people should treat them with respect as well. In this way, we can, uh, we can not only consolidate a friendship with the new southbound partner countries, but also upgrade our public image around the world. Although Taiwan has long been suffering from difficulty in the diplomatic occasions, our government has been making a great effort to break through a variety of hardship. Based on the above mentioned arguments, it is a win-win situation for both of two sides to promote the reciprocal visa-free program and to protect their rights. In this way, we may have a better outlook on the relations with them. What's more, as a member of the global village, whenever serious disasters occur, we Taiwanese always do our duty to participate in international affairs, such as humanitarian relief and economic aid, to help people in need no matter where they're from. Taiwanese volunteers are always ubiquitous and never absent in the scene of various catastrophes. As the youth in Taiwan, we are supposed to keep learning and elevating ourselves with our inborn spirit of sincere to impress people to spread our prestige to all over the world. This is our speech today. Number two, In recent years, different kinds of new media, such as social media and YouTube, are gradually on the rise. For they can spread information in a more extensive and efficient degree. What's more, we can utilize new media as a passageway to voice our opinions and public statements, making it easier for our country to propagate policies. For example, we can take advantage of Instagram, a social media site that has been popular with the younger generation, to further strengthen the promotion of the new southbound policy. Nowadays, new media is used on a very large scale. Thus, Governments can get a lot of feedback and in return, revise and improve the policies for the better. The influence and prevalence of new media definitely cannot be overlooked. If used well, it can be an excellent and innovative way to develop our diplomacy as well. Next, Nicole is going to tell us about one of the roles that new media can play in promoting diplomacy. Thank you, Ashley. As for informing the people about diplomatic affairs, new media also plays an important role of an outstanding promoter. It can provide information through our daily lives, indirectly or indirectly, affecting our understanding of diplomatic situations. At the same time, it can help us look at international affairs from a novel perspective. Through new media, diplomacy isn't as out of reach as before. Instead, our lives are a lot more closely related to the world because of it. In addition, media in all sorts of forms also spiked people's enthusiasm and curiosity, as well as allowed us to cultivate a rational and objective worldview. New media is like a diplomatic book, but free of ambiguity. It can turn complicated and standardized words concepts into clear and easy words for people to understand and also efficiently raise our diplomatic diathesis. Next, Giselle will tell us more about the topic. Thank you, Nicole. On the other hand, we can also make use of new media to increase interactions with other countries, including getting to know one another's culture and embracing differences. Take YouTube for example. We watch videos from all over the world, and by doing so, we will understand more about their languages and traditions, build closer bounds with them as well. Besides, new media can also serve as a lubricant when it comes to diplomacy. It makes up for deficiencies and elevates the values and effects of diplomatic work. 
Not only does it significantly help the diplomacy of a country, it also deepens the impression policy that have on people. Using media to promote diplomacy is a mild but not negligible way. And it definitely works very well and is worth putting effort into. Last, let's welcome Heidi to wrap it up for us. Thank you, Giselle. Last but not least, the most vital objective of diplomacy is to put the discretion of international affairs into the people's hands. Instead of the old fashioned from above down way, new media offers an equal and friendly platform to virtually implement diplomacy into our daily lives so that people from all walks of life can truly experience the effect it brings along. Today, not only can people directly keep track of the current happenings around the world, but we could also watch films or the latest news concerning global events online, which could really help broaden our horizons aside from entertainment. To conclude, new media is diverse and extensive with plentiful resources there to bring the world closer together and take on a part of our lives. That's the end of our speech. Bow. Thank you. The speech is number four. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Taiwan Day Camp. We are honored to organize this three-day activity introducing Taiwan's uniqueness. In the following three days, you will travel back in time, immerse yourselves in Taiwanese flavors, and end up going home with hands-on experiences. Now, follow me and be prepared to fall in love with Taiwan. Day one, day at the museum. Over the past three to 400 years, Taiwan lived through a unique historical experience. It was frequently subjected to outside rulers. Therefore, our camp will offer you a chance to look into Taiwan's origin, development, and unique culture. With the help of high technology, our camp is designed like an interactive museum, where you'll be surrounded by a giant touch screen wall. On the wall is a timeline of Taiwan's history. With simple touch on a certain year, a historical event will vividly unfold in front of you. For example, the Usha incident in 1930 was the last major uprising against oppression by Japan. Special effects in our camp, such as shop light, gunpowder smoke, and a shaking floor, will make you feel you are in real historical event in Usha, witnessing the cruelty of the battle and admiring the perseverance of our Aboriginal people. Day two, VR travel as a backpacker. On the second day, we will embark on a VR trip in Taiwan as a backpacker. We have designed several popular routes for you to choose from. Since traveling by train has always been a top choice for foreign travelers in Taiwan, we built a mini Taiwan railway. The first station is decorated like the Taipei train station, a starting point for most foreign backpackers. Just before you start your mini train journey, a Siri-like voice will welcome you. It will suggest you the most suitable destinations based on your own preference. For example, if you are adventurous, you may ask, would you please recommend something thrilling in Taiwan? In many replies, try Beehive Firecrackers in Yanshui and you'll be told which routes to take. After getting into the mini train, you will need to pull on a VR headset. Immediately, you will feel you are actually in one of the world's most dangerous celebrations. At the end of each VR trip, you will get a paper itinerary. It contains all the information you need during the trip. They will come in handy at the time you explore Taiwan. Day 
three, hands-on workshops and a farewell party. After two days' wonderful adventure, it's time to come back to reality. We're going to set up several workshops for you to indulge. You can really touch, feel, and eat by doing it yourself. First, let me introduce you a linguistic workshop. You can sign up a one-day course to learn Taiwanese, Hakka, or Aboriginal languages. Small as Taiwan is, you're marvel at the linguistic diversity. Although you can't expect to become proficient in one day, it helps you get around in Taiwan. One workshop you never miss is a cooking workshop, where you can make authentic Taiwanese snacks, such as oyster omelette and pineapple cake. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? Handcrafting workshops are also worth visiting. It is a great opportunity to know our local art. Making oil paper umbrella is one of which. Hakka use these umbrellas as a good fortune in their wedding ceremonies. At the end of the day comes everybody's favorite, two coupons. With these coupons, you'll receive several offers from Taiwan's local store. Nice deal, right? Hope you will enjoy what we have designed for you. When the camp is coming to an end, a farewell party will allow you to share what you learn or how you feel with other participants. More importantly, need your feedback to make Taiwan better. Taiwan's true uniqueness lies in its astonishing diversity and admirable inclusiveness. Through our three-day activity, I'm sure that you'll all be captivated by such multicultural Taiwan. Most of all, we sincerely expect that our Taiwan Day Camp will serve as the seeds of our culture, spreading and thriving in every corner of the world. Thank you. The first question the number five. Our government has launched the new southbound policy in order to stimulate new directions of growth in our economy. With greater foreign investments into Southeast Asia, this region of unique cultures and available expanded markets is promising more opportunities. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to share some ideas on how Taiwan can best elevate relations with the 18 new southbound policy partner countries. Now, let's welcome Lucas to tell us more. Xinjiao and Dem La Lucas. Last semester, I was honored to have had an opportunity to participate in free Vietnamese courses held by my school. The lessons were about Vietnamese language and culture, as well as how to prepare and properly savor delectable, authentic Vietnamese cuisine. As the Vietnamese language is now widely used in many professional and social settings in Taiwan, the Ministry of Education has enacted legislation. Legislation to offer incentives to universities and businesses to cultivate more language, culture, and trade learning in regards to Southeast Asian nations, thereby developing a more professional outlook on the Southeast Asian region. Through academic and professional courses, young people in Taiwan will be poised to enhance relations with the new Southbound policy partner countries. We can offer our expertise. Together, we can build many roads to a brighter future. Now, let's welcome Jean to tell us more. Taiwan has garnered an international reputation in the field of agricultural techniques. In my civics class, we learned that Taiwan has provided multiple efforts in collaborating in agriculture and talent exchanges between Taiwan and the target nations. Last semester, I interviewed an agricultural technician for a class project. Throughout this interview, the technician and his team introduced new seeds 
which can adapt and accommodate to the extreme climate swings of a tropical environment. The seas contain exciting new properties of water resistance, heat tolerance, and disease resistance. Sharing food and agriculture techniques is a great opportunity to deepen the connections between Taiwan and the target nations. The key to enhance relations is to showcase our proficiency and learn from their ableness. Harvest a spirit of cooperation and mutual growth. That's what the new South Down policy stands for. Now, I'll hand it to Howie. In order to shine brighter in the global community, we need to catch the spirit of smart international investment, enabling us to enhance relations with other countries. Within the last two years, Sino-American Silicon Products Corporation, a Taiwanese technological company, constructed a solar power station in the Philippines. Taiwan cooperated with the Philippines government to implement their policy of energy efficiency and carbon emissions reduction. We seized this fabulous investment opportunity for our benefit as well as enhance our foreign relations. This is one of the vast amount of opportunities that are waiting for us to create. Like Sino-American, Taiwan should strive to be practical, efficient, competitive, and beneficial on both sides of its overseas investment. By technological and economic cooperation, we can not only increase our international competitiveness, but also strengthen the relationships between Taiwan and the new South Bond policy partner countries. Now, I'll hand it back to Justin. With the growing influence of ASEAN member states in the international arena, Taiwan, as an important Asian trading country, is now dedicated to maintaining neighborly relations and developing economically with other Southeast Asian countries. We believe, through the above-mentioned examples, the new Southbound policy can implement people-to-people -people diplomacy, promote Taiwanese scientific virtuosity, and strengthen our economic links with other countries. That ensure Taiwan continues to, to reveal, reveal a light that will never wear out on the international stage. Thank you. number five. Taiwan's new South Bond policy aims to improve cooperation between Taiwan and the nations from Southeast Asia. South Asia and Australasia. Ten of these countries belong to ASEAN, which is one of the most promising economic communities in the world. In 2016, ASEAN saw a level of economic growth greater than the world average. But these ASEAN countries come in different shapes and sizes. Singapore, for example, is the world-class city-state in 2016. The Human Development Index ranked the country fifth in the world in terms of standard of living. On the other hand, India, Bhutan, Laos, Cambodia, and Nepal were all ranked below 113. Furthermore, the Human Development Index classifies ASEAN members, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, and Bhutan as developing. Australia and New Zealand, which do not belong to ASEAN, were ranked second and 13th respectively. Essentially, the nations that comprise the new South Bank policy create a diverse economic and cultural dynamic. With the promotion of the policy, it is imperative for young people to be connected to those nations. Here, there are three aspects for young people to participate in this process. In the first place, a better way for the young people or officials in Taiwan to deal with such a hot trot of nations is to cultivate intercultural confidence. Intercultural confidence is the ability for individuals to communicate effectively and appropriately with those from other countries and cultures. It goes beyond making a 100 on English test and having proper pronunciation. It doesn't mean that we learn how to say good morning in Vietnamese. It means that we learn about, about, enough about Vietnam and its people to sit down and share a nice, casual breakfast and create good morning. Intercultural confidence requires the ability to emphasize 
basically to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Continuing with, with our Vietnam example, how could we handle our first interaction in academic, political, or business setting with a group of Vietnamese? What will we talk about? Therefore, students should learn to respect the individual from different cultures so that they are able to make a great conversation with the people from the target nation of our new Sunspot policy. Next, students or officials in Taiwan should gain first-hand experience with the people from those target nations. For example, they can join the exchange programs, study abroad programs, and community outreach programs. They need more cross-cultural interaction at a local grassroots level so that our future leaders will be prepared when the kids are handed over and they are the ones making important decisions. This can be accomplished by encouraging students to study or travel abroad. Our students need to study political and economic framework, but they also need to play football with the Cambodians, go surfing with Australians, drink coffee and eat bao meat with the Vietnamese, this is how our students can really get to know the people of those target nations. Finally, students or officials in Taiwan can pick up some expertise needed in those nations, such as languages, company management, e-commerce industry, and information engineering. Many of the target nations' economies are facing rapid growth, and their industry and Taiwan's investors in the region have experienced a sharp rise in demand for skilled workers. Young people in the Taiwan can apply for the local internship in those nations while they are still students. In this way, they will get more opportunities to cultivate their talents and receive training. After they graduate, their experience will certainly improve the students' chances of securing jobs at home or abroad. As for the enterprises, they can recruit the skilled workers they need. Therefore, it will be a win-win situation for both sides. With the promotion of the new Southbound policy, our government already offers some scholarship for the young people. The youth should make good use of, of the opportunity to build positive relationship with the nations of ASEAN, South Asia, New Zealand, and Australia. As my teammates have mentioned in our today's speech, young people are the front lines gaining cultural experience and receive training programs. And that will be easy for us to establish close cooperation and achieve regional development in the future. Bao. Thanks for listening. <laughs>